Welcome to the Career Academy. At the Nottingham, we believe in driving aspiration for the future for young people. Moving from education to employment is an exciting journey, but one that can require a lot of skills to reach your full potential. Here is Jenna, Harriet and Lynn talking about their careers as women in finance. Hi, so my name's Jenna McKenzie Day. I'm a senior product manager at the Nottingham Building Society, and I look after our savings here at the society. In terms of my career journey, so I completed A levels, I did business economics, psychology, and chemistry. And to be perfectly honest, at that point, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go to university, and I really enjoyed the business economics and psychology, particular parts of my A levels. So I looked at a degree with marketing and management at Newcastle University and within that degree I also managed to do a placement year where I worked for HSBC so effectively started my career in finance around that point. Finished my degree at Newcastle and then joined Santander on their retail graduate scheme so working in the branches serving customers, opening accounts, did a variety of different placements across that scheme for 18, kind of 24 months, and then saw an opportunity that came up at one of their head office functions as an assistant marketing manager working on personal loans. So basically looking after the personal loans for the bank, their pricing, their management, so basically their kind of formal product management. I got accepted into that job and worked there and also got promoted into a marketing manager role there as well still working on personal loans then I moved across to what's called a challenger bank so a very kind of digital led bank which was a company called Oldermore and I worked with them looking after their retail savings and their business savings account and at a level of a product manager now going from a big bank of hundreds of marketing managers to then going into a team of three was a massive change and a real kind of learning curve because your exposure to the business really 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 accelerated in that job. Very similar to where I am now at the Nottingham. Having worked at Oldermore, I moved across to the Nottingham again, staying on savings to so looking after the retail savings part of the Nottingham, which includes the branch network and also our digital arm, Beehive Money. And from that perspective, it's having learnt what I did at Oldermore in a very, very small team that stood me in good stead for the job here at the Nottingham. Because again, we're incredibly small. There is a team of three of us that look after the day to day management of 2.8 billion million pounds worth of savings for the society so plenty to be going on with but I think it's just in a context of when I was sort of 17 18 doing my A-levels to kind of where I am now you know I didn't have a kind of deliberate path that I went on but kind of doing that placement year in my degree really set me up into finance and has kind of stepped me through ever since. So hi I'm Harriet Stevens the head of financial planning and analysis at the Nottingham. I've been with the society for nearly four years across different roles within finance and at the moment my role is essentially responsible for the production of the firm's financial forecast and budgeting process. What we're trying to do there is project what our business would look like over a long-term planning horizon. So similar to Jenna, at school I wasn't really sure what my career path was going to look like but I always knew I enjoyed maths as a subject and so I focused on more analytical roles. Despite that, however, I did maths, economics and English literature at A-level, so a bit of a variety. But then I took that kind of maths and finance view forward and at university I opted to do a finance degree. But what really attracted me there was a four-year course which allowed me to do a year's work placement, so very similar to Jenna. And I spent a year working for an investment bank in London. And that really allowed me to see what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, and ultimately led to me returning in the finance team there as a graduate. I then had 10 or so years working in various different finance and treasury roles across investment banks in London and also studied to do my accountancy qualifications at the same time. But that work experience really allowed me to shape what I enjoyed and where I wanted to focus my career on. So after my time in London, I decided I wanted a bit of a change of pace, a bit of a lifestyle change, and I luckily saw an opportunity to come back up north and took this role at the Nottingham, which is where I've been ever since. Hi, my name's Lynn Hunter and similar to Jenna, I'm working on the product and proposition and pricing team, but I look after the other side, the mortgages side. And again, just talking about my background, where I came from to get to this role, similar to both Harry. 
Harriet and Jenna, I took economics, geography and English literature A-level, trying to spread the sort of areas because I really didn't know what I wanted to go into or what I wanted to do. But after that, I went for an honours degree in business studies and similar again with a placement year so that I could actually find out what a career might look like in any area at that time. I didn't really know what I wanted to go into, but similarly, I went into finance and got a placement with Barclays Bank at the Chief Accountants Department. So that was my sort of start into finance, which I did enjoy, enjoyed the math side and that sort of side of things. And for, when I finished my degree, I decided that chartered accountancy was for me. So I uh, went to start to be a trainee chartered accountant, but actually changed my career quite early on when I started. I did enjoy a lot of the work aspects of the work, but as part of my degree, I'd also done a diploma in marketing and I was getting quite a lot of pull, I think, from the marketing side. So I basically got a job in engineering then, but in marketing and still doing pricing, promotion, those sort of areas. And from that, I managed to get on doing a doctorate as well at Loughborough University on product development. So although I was sort of away from finance at this stage, I was still very much working on things to do with pricing in the marketing role. And then I took a step back into financial services and got a product manager job with a building society, a quite big building society at the time. And really, I've worked in product management ever since across some building societies and some big banks. And I've basically worked on current accounts, savings, products, credit cards, insurance, mortgages, most products that are in financial services. And then obviously, I've come to Nottingham. I've been working at Nottingham for four four years and again working on as I said the pricing and proposition team. So reflecting on how I use maths in my everyday role, so a key underpin to our financial planning process is our financial modelling. So we use both Excel and financial systems to help simulate what our business looks like over time and what this might mean for our profit levels, what this might mean for our customers. So my maths background really helped me to be able to structure and manage these type of models, but also stepping back and being able to quickly validate if what the models are saying makes sense. So sense checking, getting a feel for what the numbers look like. So going back to my finance degree, my ACCA qualifications, those all really provided me with good skills from the analytical perspective, which have helped support my career. It's very similar to Harriet. In my role, forecasting plays a really key part of the job. So looking after savings for the society, we are trying to manage as a team how much money is coming into the society, what products that goes into and then ultimately working across with Lynn into the mortgage side of effectively lending that funding out that we get across. So again, spend a lot of time in Excel and kind of working through into different models, looking at sort of cash flow management. And although I didn't take maths into a kind of an A-level qualification, I completed that at GCSE, but doing business economics and then a marketing and management degree. And also I did my Chartered Institute of Marketing diploma as well all elements of that kind of fall within what I would class as the day job basically. But I think there's elements that you do at school in maths that you know give you some foundations of going forward and then depending which career you're wanting to go into you will specialise in different areas but very very much from my perspective you know it is a numbers based job and we spend a lot of time interrogating and analysing numbers and you know distributing those into other areas of the business to understand where we are performing and understand if there are some opportunities and challenges that we need to face into. Really another aspect of our role where we use maths is product development and research. So looking at emerging trends, regulation changes. So we need maths to basically analyse the data and the insight that we get from that to be able to develop new products. We also, another big part of our role is management information. So that's daily checking of tables and graphs of how many applications we get, the type of borrower, the products they're on, the rates they're on and the amount they're borrowing. So all of that basically is from our foundation in maths when we were at school. 
So yes, when I started out in my career in kind of bigger banks in London, I was part of a graduate scheme. Whilst there were some other female graduates, we were very much in the kind of broader minority in joining. However, I was very lucky during my journey. I always had some really strong, inspirational female, either bosses or mentors that helped guide me through during my career path. So I, I never really felt at any kind of disadvantage. I was always inspired to take different opportunities and experience different things as I went through various different jobs. Yeah, I think from my perspective, pretty much doing my degree because I went down the route of kind of doing a marketing management degree, it, it, it was kind of relatively kind of 50-50 in terms of, of gender on the degree. Then coming across into the retail graduate scheme, working in sort of the branch networks for a bank, it was kind of more sort of female orientated. When I took the switch across into the head office function, actually until I came to the Nottingham, that was the first time I'd actually had a female line manager. I'd always worked in predominantly male teams, but actually in the broader team that Lynn and I both sit in now into the pricing and proposition element, it's pretty much for me the first time that it actually tips more in sort of the female balance than from a male perspective, which at the places I've worked before is quite different. But in agreements with Harriet, even though until I came to the Nottingham, I had kind of my first female direct line manager, there's always been sort of females in different areas of the jobs that I work with, working in kind of product management, pricing. You work with a lot of different business areas, so whether that be sort of into finance, into liquidity or into a kind of credit risk function when I was working on personal loans, compliance, communications, you know, the number of kind of stakeholders and different departments that you come across is really, really vast. So even though you didn't, I didn't necessarily have a lot of females, I guess, in my immediate sort of line as a business, that collaborative working was really, really prominent. And there was always kind of very strong female leaders in different areas of the business which were always really supportive in my career. So when I started out in my chartered accountant career there, there were no women on the chartered accountant board of members so there was very few graduate women that went into chartered accountancy so straight away you sort of have to make your mark and basically be quite outspoken I think. Then of course I moved to engineering and there literally were no women in engineering at all. You know I was one of the few there other than you know some other ladies that were working in the canteen and things but there was nobody certainly of a professional sort of standing so again that gave me good ability to show that females can do everything as well so that was a good starting point for me and again like the others when you go into finance it was a bit of a mix to be honest sometimes like Jenna said on our current team we've got quite a lot of females but then sometimes you're the only one so yeah it sort of goes in different cycles but I think you know it's basically open to all and you know you have to make your mark with your own experience so if I think about the bit of advice I'd give to my younger self, it would be to remind myself if I wasn't certain or wasn't sure about a certain path or a certain opportunity, just to get stuck in, experience different things and take as many opportunities as possible. Paths are, are never clear, but part of that is figuring things out as you go along and remembering that having a really strong support network across family, friends, work colleagues is really, really helpful in guiding you through that path. So the bit of advice I'd give myself if I was back in my younger time would be to always aim high but always do what you enjoy. Basically, if there's if there's a role you go into and like Harriet said, you try it and it's not for you, there's plenty of other roles out there that you can go and try and you can, you can succeed. It's not a failure to try and not enjoy something. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, if I was to give advice to my younger self, I think it would be at that kind of point at time, it's sort of school when you're kind of finishing into your GCSEs and A-levels, there's almost quite a lot of pressure to think about what you want to do going forward. Forward. And I think from my perspective, I would kind of reflect back and go, do you know what? You don't have to have a defined path at that point and you will find your way into career, whatever that is. And I think a lot of people that will go on the journey in the career, it's not the exact route that they were expecting to go down and different opportunities and things that will come about within that journey. But I think for me, you know, you spend a lot of your working life with the people you work with day in, day out. And I think having that 
that you know real kind of team network around you I think that gives you such enjoyment out of the job not just actually doing the job itself and I think reflecting on the importance of that in your career will put you in kind of good stead to go forward. So there we have it our insight into the careers of some of our women in finance. Check out the rest of our Career Academy to hear from some of our team members about a day in their life of working in financial services.